An ideal UFO witness would have good eyesight, no financial agenda for making a story up, and no preconceptions. For these reasons, reliable UFO witnesses are not always easy to find. You know, John, that's true, but maybe people have been looking in the wrong places. Recently, as part of our ongoing investigation, encounters went looking in the right place and spoke with children who are convinced they saw a UFO. Here's our story. For more than four decades, children have been reporting UFO sightings. These wide-eyed observers offer a unique perspective on this unusual phenomenon. And it came this way. And then, first it was going real slow, and then it just took off. Boom. There's two of them up there. I know it. Look at them, flashing. They're flashing. Hampton, Georgia is a small town near Atlanta. Hello. It was in this well kept trailer park that a group of ordinary school children encountered a UFO. What'd you see? I looked up at the trees and there was this thing floating up there. I saw something up there and I didn't quite know what it was. And I asked Shannon, I said, what is that? And she said, she don't know. And I hollered at Chris. She jumped up and said, UFO. So I jumped up and I looked and I saw something black. It was hovering right over the building, but it was real high in the sky. So it hovered right across the air, uh, over the sky and over to that radio tower. We were screaming. You yeah. were screaming? Yeah. I, I just sort of, I mean, I screamed a little bit, but I just sort of was in shock when I never seen anything like it. This incident was investigated by Michael Norris, an Air Force veteran and chief editor of UFO Encounters. Now, this craft that they described, is this, is this a craft that you've had reportings of before in this area? What's interesting is when we started to report about this particular sighting, and we actually published some of the, the, the pictures and drawings that the, the children had made, I got some calls from people from other parts of the country saying, you know, we've seen this come up before. We have people who say they've also described this same shape, size, with the lights. But yet, when you go to officials, whether the FAA or your military bases or the airports, there is nothing in conventional aircraft that we know of can, that could explain that what, what it is they saw. The UFO vanished within seconds, but these children will feel the effects of this encounter for a very long time, and more than one will bear the scars of public ridicule. So when you walked into the school and you saw the principal and the teachers laughing at the children's experience, how did you feel? Made me mad. Made me very mad. I saw that principal laughing at those kids and joking around, and I, t I asked him, I said, look at these kids. Can't you tell by looking at them there's something wrong? Citing a UFO and being ridiculed for reporting it is upsetting enough for a child. What's far worse is a close encounter of a different kind, alien abduction. Justin, a 10-year-old living in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, describes his first alien encounter. I fell asleep, and then I woke up a little bit later early in the morning, and I saw these gray beings. And um, I was just laying there. Then I felt like a device, something around my wrists, my, and my neck, and my um, ankle. For children who've always relied on adults to protect them, these encounters can be traumatic. But kids aren't the only ones affected. Their parents suffer just as much from feelings of helplessness and fear. Having your child abducted is terrifying no matter who or what is doing it. It's like any, any other abduction, any other abduction. If some man or, or some guy with a ski mask would come in your house and take your child, the only difference between your child and mine is mine comes back. When we come back, the terrifying stories of children who are convinced they have been abducted by aliens. Stay with us. And are convinced they have seen UFOs. And a few of these witnesses also believe they have been abducted by aliens. Author Bud Hopkins was one of the first researchers to investigate the abduction phenomenon, and he believes these children are among the most credible witnesses he has ever interviewed. From the Midwest to New York, these stories of alien visitations are strikingly similar. Manhattan-based writer Bud Hopkins has researched thousands of alleged alien abductions. 
what has emerged through many, many cases is the idea that the aliens are essentially trying to create a hybrid mix of themselves and ourselves. They're interested in our DNA, our genetic makeup, and beyond that, they're interested in our personalities, uh, our affection for our children, our love for one another, a whole kind of range of um, what we think of almost the most human characteristics we have emotionally. One of his most remarkable cases is that of John Cortelia, an 11-year-old boy from New York's Lower East Side. When it happened, I had woke up from my sleep, and I had the sudden urge to look out the window in my living room. So I got out of my bed, and I just, you know, went into my uh, living room. I looked out the window, and I saw something emerging from the water. So I didn't know what it was. I just watched it as it came toward my window. And as my mother passed me, I was screaming, and she didn't even hear me. So this thing just pulled me through the window. John claims that these aliens took him aboard a UFO. They just took me into the door, and I was just laid down onto my stomach looking out these uh, windows. I do remember um, some sort of a scraping with a sort of long rounded object sort of like a knife scraping me or scratching me with it trying to like hurt me or something I woke up the next morning like it was a dream only though i knew it wasn't a dream skeptics claim that abduction stories are the product of a child's active imagination but bud hopkins has developed an elaborate system of tests to prove these skeptics wrong i developed the hopkins image recognition test a number of years ago because i felt that a projective test based on simple images and checking the child's response would be a very viable way of looking into their experiences. So uh, I show these children, uh, first the Santa Claus, and we go through Batman and clowns and police and so on. When we come to the alien out of 10 pictures, which is very neutral, uh, we just listen to what the child says, how the child responds. I have seen a child absolutely uh, fold up in tears, hide herself in her father's lap, crying, I don't want that man in my dreams. Uh, that's the man who takes me away. Fortunately, these traumatized and bewildered families have the support of concerned experts. Newport Beach, California is the home of Dr. Deborah Trincala. She specializes in the counseling of alien abductees. I think it's very important that we look at children who've had anomalous experiences in the following way. We need to listen to them. We need to understand that from their world, they don't have a handle on what's happened. They need to have a sense of control over their lives to the degree that they can handle that. That's part of their development. And so we have to be attentive to that need. If these encounters are the results of some bizarre alien experiment, why are our children being targeted? And when these children grow up, how will the experiment be concluded? All we and they can do is wait. Now, Sandra, you'll have to admit that most children have pretty active imaginations, and you put that together with all the TV they watch. John, that may be true to some degree, but it's wrong to assume that children would go out of their way to make these kinds of stories up. In fact, joining us tonight are three cases in point. They are members of the UFO Investigators and Other Strange Phenomenon Club all the way from Virginia. They are Wesley Frank, Jonathan Pine, and Kevin Trobaugh. Welcome. Now, you just saw a story. Those children sighted a UFO, told their friends at school, and were ridiculed. They were laughed at. Do you, do you guys believe in UFOs? Oh, yeah. yeah. If you do see a UFO, what do you do as investigators? We ask people of that area where we saw it if they saw the same thing. What do you say to kids who say, oh, you're making it all up? Kevin? Well, maybe they don't believe in UFOs, but we do, and we think we saw one. So, like, we tell them, and if they don't believe us, they don't believe us. Right. What about you, Wesley? If I believe there's, like, UFOs and stuff, then that's all that matters to me. Well, keep looking at the skies. We're glad that you care, and good luck with your investigations. We'll be right back. 